Hey there. We're going to talk about the basics of the project life cycle. And if that was all we were going to yap about in this tutorial, our presentation would only last about one minute. That's why we're going to discuss a little bit more on how PMI has organized our project processes in support of the overall project life cycle in order to build products and services. So here's what we're going to discuss. Product life cycle, that's what that LC is. Project life cycle, process groups, knowledge areas, that's what the KA is, and of course processes in general. So let's get started. Let's talk about projects and product services. A project refers to the work required to create a service or deliverable. The project is temporary with a start and an end, as you can see by those arrows. You'll also need a team to perform the work. And look at, here they are. Awful happy. Well, all but one of them. The team may be a team of one, of course. So a product is basically a service or deliverable that is created as a result of doing work on a project. In the case of our software and IT world, this would normally be a software product such as a shrink wrap or even a web-based service. This is an example of an Adobe Creative Suite product that could be created by the team as a result of doing work on the project. Okay, there's a life cycle for each. A product can be viewed as a long-term thing that usually starts on the approval of a business plan. It will show that here at the very start of this arrow. Eventually, the product goes out of service, possibly years away. During that product life cycle, the very first project to create the product has its own life cycle, and we'll call that project number one. At that point, it is rolled out, and then eventually there will be more projects that will continue. And as you would imagine, you can see there was a mistake made. Uh-oh. Anyways, over time, each of these projects may get actually smaller and smaller, but you get the idea. Put this in the background, okay, like that, so you can still kind of see it. So there's also a hierarchy in project management. Now the hierarchy starts with a process. There are lots of processes, as you'll soon see, and the fact that there are so many defined doesn't mean you have to apply them all to every project. In fact, that would be relatively rare. You have process groups where the processes reside in, and then you have something called a knowledge area. But the knowledge area groups like process groups that includes its own processes into one distinct area. One example of a knowledge area is the integration management knowledge area. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And of course, all these things work together to create a product like we talked about before. So that's how it all works. It's pretty simple. Here's an example of a process. It's called the Develop the Project Charter. Each process has inputs and outputs, with you as the project manager determining how best to apply either tools or techniques so that you can properly manage the right inputs to produce bona fide outputs. One of the inputs is something called a statement of work, and that may go in to develop the charter. Another one is, these are documents by the way, a contract just denoted by the letter C. You usually have something called a business case, and that can go in to develop the project charter. And then you have this abstract thing that littered throughout the PMBOK guide called organizational process assets. And these assets can be all sorts of artifacts or documents or history about how other similar projects have been performed in the past. That can be extremely valuable so that you don't repeat mistakes project after project. So what's involved in terms of tools and techniques? You use things in this process such as expert judgment. I particularly like that one. That's where like intuition and knowledge and experience comes into play. You can also use something called mathematical models where there are known calculation and algorithms that can help. Or you may have things like scoring models that may use things like statistics or ways to filter out all sorts of inputs to produce the output. And talking about the output, the develop the project charter process creates generally a single most important document. It's called the project charter. And according to most people I know in the project management world, you don't have a project 
unless you have a project charter. So I think it's time to erase all that stuff. I think you get the idea. On the left, you generally show inputs, like we showed. Over here, the ones I'm erasing. It's taken me a while, I know. You have tools and techniques that are performed by you, the project manager or the scrum master, in the case of Agile. And then you produce something out of every process. And you may produce multiple things, but in this particular process, it's the project charter. So we'll erase that one. We'll evaporate that into the sunset. There we go. Okay, let's talk about process groups. We mentioned that before, and we'll start with the very first one. This is the initiating one. This is a process group that includes processes that defines and then authorizes the project. Key outputs in this project phase are project charter and project scope documents. This basically starts the whole project off. And you have another one called planning. Planning process group defines objectives and plans to achieve the project. The project management plan in the fourth edition of the PMBOK guide, or in earlier versions of the PMBOK guide, they called this the project plan, is basically the key output. Then you've got the executing process group. This is where you integrate people and resources to carry out the plans we've just discussed. This is where all the work's done. Then you've got monitoring and controlling, which I hate writing all that out, so I tend to abbreviate it and call it M and C. In order to meet project objectives, this set of processes measure and monitor project progress. Most of the processes here are centered on quality and change management. And of course, finally, we have the closing. This is where you've got a big party to, once you ship the product, and this is where the project is completed, the product or services is accepted or should be accepted by the customer, 